riding us through turn number two. That's a good battle for fifth right there, actually for fourth. Jeff Burton in the 99 has fourth, and Kenny Wallace in the 81 running in fifth. Steve Burns, what are you hearing about Jeff Burton? Can he hold Kenny at bay, do you think? Boy, I don't know, Eli. He's in a lot of pain. A few laps ago, Buddy Baker wondered what had happened to the 99. I went down to crew chief Frank Stoddard. Frank said, don't forget that Jeff is in a backup car because of an accident. His neck and I guess his left hand are extremely sore. But Jeff Burton is in a lot of pain fighting to hold on to the finish. That's the car with which they won at the Martinsville Speedway. And that was a wicked hit that he took yeah. in that practice session. He almost got the car over, hit the wall very hard with the nose, came around and hit it again with the tail end. Burton, Burton, at the end of this race. I didn't, mean to do, I didn't mean to do that either. I did not mean to do that. Just came out. A dozen laps to go. And of course, unless there's a caution flag, we're going to stay right with you here to the checkers. We're not going to break away. Well, Rusty Wallace still looking to break that losing streak. The one thing, though, Earnhardt, just a second ago, was about 20 car lengths back. He's a caught up to Rusty now, making a move to the inside as they head down towards turn one. Eighth place. Not that time. I think Rusty fighting a loose problem, though. The back of the car kicked way out as they were coming off the corner there. I don't know whether the lap car had anything to do with that or not. Started out the season so strong, great run at Daytona, top fives every week, leading the points, and then I won't say it all went away, but he was unable to capitalize on it. Hasn't won yet this year. Dick Berger, how would you like to have a loose race car and have Mr. Earnhardt working on the back end of that car? He's a past master of getting right up under somebody and making it looser than it should be. I wouldn't want to have a good race car and have Earnhardt on my back bumper, buddy. He really does know how to loosen up the car that's in front and get the position while he's at it. Is there anybody in that grandstand that doesn't have a shirt or a hat that has some driver's Isn't name on something? it? It's just amazing. These fans are so loyal to their drivers. And this place full to capacity, bathed in sunshine. Turned out to be a beautiful day. All the threats of the remnants of the hurricane and tropical storm Bonnie. She went off the coast and it's become a beautiful weather weekend here in New Hampshire. Up front, there's Gordon still. One and six tenths seconds on Mark Martin now. Two and six tenths on Andretti. Three and six tenths seconds on Jarrett. And then eight and nine tenths seconds over fifth place Jeff Burton. Petty there in the 44. He's in 33rd position. Five laps down. You know, as you watch Gordon, you've just got to be incredulous at the year he is having and at the career he is having. Some people have a great year as a race car driver. Some people might have two. But this guy has been scoring like this since 1994 when he first won. You know, I'm looking at the computer. Mark Martin is not rubbing the right rear tire anymore, and he's picked the pace back up just a little bit. Whether he runs out of laps or not, he's back up to full speed. He's pulled away from Mandretti in third place now and set his sights on Jeff Gordon in front of him. Next time by, it'll be five laps to go. Gordon holds on to win as you see Andretti going around Ron Bellows there or Kyle Petty rather if Jeff Gordon holds on to win it would be his 38th career win in his 179th start that is a victory every 4.7 starts that's, that's remarkable well I'll tell you what when, when those watching this broadcast get real old just remember this day and other days like it because this is a legend in the making that you're watching here another one of those two tire stops and yep. that guy in the right hand corner up there was one of the reasons that he's had that great success Ray Everingham is crew chief I was, he was in the box just then as we were showing Jeff Gordon go around the racetrack and you could add Randy Dorton the engine builder and you could add the rainbow warriors who work on the car and the crew back at the garage this is a team
team that has it all together like is seldom seen in auto racing anywhere in the world. Well, these two are going at it again. Sorry, yep. partners. They're really Come having on. a go at it here right near the end of the race. That battle, Labonte, Wallace, Earnhardt, that is seventh, eighth, and ninth. Front, the leader working some traffic. Gordon around. Bill Elliott has had problems today. Bill's in 38th, some 40 laps down. And you saw that graphic moments ago showing you the highest previous finish by a pole sitter here. That obviously translates to the fact that a pole sitter has never won a race here at New Hampshire, and that might change as Gordon puts a lap on Darrell Waltrip. DW's in 32nd spot a couple of laps back. I don't know about you guys, this thing's flown by. It really has. I was wishing this thing was 400 laps just a little while ago. It's been a fun race. Gordon still has to deal with traffic. That's Michael Waltrip in the Wood Brothers car. The Woods hope to be able to name a replacement for Michael Waltrip in the next week and a half or so. They say they've had 11 applicants for that ride from every form of racing except the Indy Racing League. You know, Mark Martin right now has really cut into this lead. I know that Jeff Gordon realizes the white flag's out right now, but you can see right now any mistake right now, and Mark Martin would be there. Michael Waltrip in close against Gordon as they come off the corner and just backed out. To turn three. He won't force the issue. Looking for his third win at New Hampshire. It's ninth win of the year. The DuPont colors again. Heading to victory lane. Jeff Gordon and the Rainbow Warriors take on two tires. We've seen that script before. Back at lap 233. They refused to lose. They didn't. And again, Mark Martin finishes second to the guy he's been chasing all season long. Jeff Gordon's going to victory lane. We will as well as soon as we come back to New Hampshire. Back to New Hampshire. International Speedway, the Farm Aid on CMT 300 in the books. Time for us now to go to victory lane. And today's interview brought to you by the Money Store, where you can refinance your home and consolidate your debts with just one phone call. That man's not going to have to worry about his refinancing. He's got another <laughs> win. <laughs> I think he could probably loan the money store some money, guys. That's the kind of year he's having. Jeff, I want to say congratulations, first of all. But we were listening to you on the radio when Ray made that call for two tires. You weren't exactly sure that was the thing to do, but boy, was it ever. Well, 66 or however many laps that were left was a, a lot of laps. And... Uh, I never dreamed it was going to be that good. I want to thank God. Oh, man, I tell you what, uh, we are being blessed with so many wonderful things, and, and we're so fortunate. And I'm fortunate to have a guy like Ray Everham that makes those calls. He, he doesn't mind making gutsy calls, and, and I'll drive the wheels off the thing when they put those two tires on. And again, like Michigan, my car came to life with those two tires. I just, you know, I was loose at the beginning, and then I got real tight in the middle part of the race, and uh, those two tires just made it come to life. And, uh, awesome, awesome job for all the guys on this DuPont Chevrolet. Well, now, I know that you had to be you had to be seeing Mark Martin gaining on you, but then he tried a little too hard a couple of times and got in the wall there. Were they telling you that? Well, I saw him in my mirror. I was watching to see how much he was gaining on me, and I knew he had four tires against our two, and, you know, I was just driving the wheels off the thing, and, and uh, I was surprised he wasn't gaining on me faster than he was, and I thought, man, we might have a shot at this thing, but I knew uh, over time his car was just going to continue to get better and mine was going to go away. He hit the wall, man. I came to life. Well, I tell you what, I got up and see my elbows poked out the window, and I said, all right, now I got to drive this thing for everything it's worth. And uh, uh, what an what a, uh, unbelievable day. Well, let me ask you a question. Now, you and Ray got a couple of days off now. Save the victory. Can, can maybe the three of us go to Atlantic City? Uh, I tell you what, I think we're using up all of our luck on the racetrack. I don't think there's any left outside of it. <laughs> all right, congratulations again to Jeff Gordon. Ninth win of the year, third here at New Hampshire. Now let's go to Steve Burns. Well, Glenn, where was Jimmy Spencer? Jimmy, we followed your story all day. A hard crash in practice. You didn't decide until 11 o'clock this morning to drive, and you come home 13th. First of all, how did you do it? Secondly, how do you feel? I wanted it really bad. You know, I wanted it for Team Winston. They gave up a lot the last three weeks. Thank Teddy Musgrave for helping us the last two weeks and today. And, 
You know, it's good to be back. I mean, I wish we didn't crash that car yesterday in practice, but the track, the sealer wasn't really good on it, you know. But we had a lot of good breaks today, you know. I mean, starting 43rd to come and get 13th, that's pretty good. My crew, crew, pit crew worked hard this week. We were off last week at Bristol, but they worked hard, and we're still not where we want to be. But 13th, we moved up a spot in the points, and uh, I'm hoping we kept Travis Levitt in the points, and it's uh, still a lot of races left, Steve. Jimmy, I know there's been some turmoil in your mind about about your racing career, about your future. You've been torn. You know, you've got a family. What are your thoughts now? Well, you always think you can never race again. You know, you always got to have that possibility that, you know, that the injury's bad enough that it could happen. And at Watkins Glen the next week, when I woke up Monday morning after Watkins Glen, I said, I'm in trouble here. And I just want to thank the doctors, you know, for uh, diagnosing. And, and, you know, they didn't, they didn't say you should stay out of the car.